This challenge is color portrait, uh, and as the name describes, we have to take a portrait of a person in color. This is a challenge between me and Laura um, to see who can uh, who can do this the best. I came across this band, Foxy Shazam, uh, because I was going to do one of their music videos, and I'd worked with Eric, the singer, for quite some time on a really cool concept um, that we were going to film, and then basically the shoot got pushed, and we were left with this open spot of time where we both weren't doing anything, uh, so I thought it would still be great to collaborate because I, uh, I've liked the band for some time. We thought it would be great to collaborate on something, so we did a still photo shoot that the band could use for a promo and press. My name is Eric Nally, and I'm the lead singer of a band called Foxy Shazam. And, uh, we set up the shot. It was freezing, it was really windy, but it was fun. And I uh, got everything ready to go. Um, doused the microphone in lighter fluid, and then uh, lit it and took a bunch of awesome pictures. And, and, uh, and I am the front, man to, uh, the front man of a band, and that's a very important role. Uh, people don't take it very serious anymore these days, but I do, I do. So, you know, that, that entails me going to different photo shoots, and basically being the center of attention, and I love it. Basically, I've seen Foxy Shazam live a few times, and Eric does this really interesting dance with his microphone stand where he like throws it down, catches it with his foot, and picks it back up again. And I wanted to capture that kind of movement in the photo shoot, but in a more interesting way. So on the phone, I was talking with Eric, and the actual idea of lighting the microphone on fire was his. He was telling me, you know, Joe, I have this great idea where I want to I wanna dance with my microphone, but I want to light it on fire. So I thought that was pretty cool. And that's exactly how it came to be. So when I was looking for a location, since we knew that we were actually going to light the microphone on fire, I knew that it obviously had to be outdoors. And in New York shooting, there's not a lot of open spaces outdoors except rooftops. Um, so that's when I started to look for a big open space where we could work comfortably. And sure enough, I got a response pretty quickly from a guy who was willing to let us use his rooftop in my neighborhood. And we set up the whole shoot there. Basically, everyone was telling me that day that, oh, Joey, you shouldn't do the shoot there. It's going to rain. It's going to rain. And as naive as I am, I just didn't listen to them. But it didn't rain. What it did bring were these kind of dark, edgy storm clouds in the background of the picture. Um, and that actually made things more interesting because we had this really atmospheric sky in the background. And the way that I was planning on using a smoke machine to tie it all together, that dark, cloudy background actually really helped the smoke in the foreground. The way we made the flaming microphone was we unscrewed the top of it emptied out all the electronics, and we put in a rag that was uh, dipped in um, lighter fluid. And then we stuffed the rag inside the microphone head, screwed it back on, and lit it on fire. And it was actually able to stay lit for maybe like 10 minutes. Step by step lighting this, the first thing that I wanted to think about was the main light and where it was going to go. So I figured, I started thinking about what are the actual light sources that are in this picture. And of course, if he has a flaming microphone, there's going to be some light that comes off from that fire. In real life, the fire actually wasn't bright enough in the daylight to affect his face, but in photography, we can lie a little bit. So what I did was I had a bare bulb Prophoto flash. I got this big globe from a website called a thousandbulbs.com which is almost the same as a ProGlobe modifier, except it's way cheaper. It's just this big bulb that goes on a ceiling fan. I put this over top of my bare bulb light so that the light sprayed out in kind of 360 degrees. Then that light was held off camera, kind of in the same position as where the flaming microphone was, so it appeared as if the light 
was being emitted from that flaming microphone, but it was actually from the strobe, which was slightly off camera. The main light, which was replicating that glow from the flaming microphone, was covered in a CTO warming gel. This is a color correction filter uh, that's supposed to make your light appear warmer. So by wrapping it again and again and again with more orange, more orange, it gave that really fiery reddish orange glow to his face. The difference between using the, the, the cheap bulb that I bought at a thousandbulbs.com versus using the actual pro, uh, pro Globe from Profoto, the look, I've done tests and it's actually not that different. The difference is the price. And I am an enormous cheap ass. I like to make my own lighting modifiers. Uh, so it was the obvious choice just to buy this you know, $20 globe online and tape it onto my light. So thinking about the light sources that are already there, in the final image. I have the flaming microphone, but I also have the natural sunlight, which was behind Eric, kind of poking through the clouds. Now, I wanted to really enhance that light and make it appear brighter and also have it wrap around the subject to kind of separate him a little bit from the background and help, those, uh, help the smoke stand out that was in the foreground. So what I did was I put a flash behind Eric um, that basically gave uh, this kind of edge separation light on his pants and on his hair uh, and on his torso. What that was was just a pro photo flash in a zoom reflector. Now when you see the sunlight behind Eric and you also have that artificial flash it kind of ties the two together and it appears as if it's coming from the same light source even though it's kind of fake and it's, and it's kind of lying but it enhances the overall image. And visual is very important for bands these days because a lot of people, you know, a lot of bands now don't, aren't concerned about the way they look. It's all about the music and stuff. And I understand that it, it is in a way, but for me, it's like, it's a whole lot easier to, to understand a sound when you can see what it looks like. How do you feel, Eric? Good. Cold. I got my coat on under here. <laughs> but how do you feel with, with the fire? <laughs> because the way the color balance was in the in the picture, um, I wanted to actually color balance the image a little bit cold, so that the warm firelight was still warm because there's so much CTO gel on the main light. But then color balancing the white balance on the camera to a more cold overall look uh, brought the natural daylight a little bit more of a blue tone. So with that kind of blue sun behind and that blue light flashing from behind, it kind of gave this really interesting color, color temperature throughout the uh, picture that started orange in one corner and kind of fades into this blue at the top. So when talking about the challenge, when thinking about color portrait, having these two kind of weird colors fade into each, each other seemed to really work. So around where we had the main light, we also had a smoke machine. Uh, my friend and assistant Jesse was operating the smoke machine and we did not know that it was going to be a windy day but it kind of worked in our favor because as he sprayed the smoke machine the wind kind of swept it across the entire bottom of the image uh, leaving Eric's face unaffected by the smoke but it's still kind of wrapping around the bottom. After I was sure that I got the shot that I wanted and I was sure that I had the expression from Eric captured, 
for the final image, I wanted to take a blue. Uh, I wanted to take a few blank frames of the of just the set without Eric in. So these are called plates. So I had this smoke machine just spraying, and I captured just the smoke in a lot of different ways because I knew that I could use these after in Photoshop to add different layers of smoke and even more elements to the final image. The daylight, because we shot this pretty much in the middle of the day, a little bit towards sunset, it was around, I would say, 4.30, the sun was setting around 6 or 7. Um, because it was so bright out, we actually couldn't see the real fire from the microphone. Uh, we had a hard time capturing that light on the camera. So, as well as taking plates of the actual smoke moving, I took a few plates of the fire itself because I knew that if I ever needed a piece of fire that looked like it was coming from a flaming microphone, that I could just use those different elements and combine them later in Photoshop. But I think now when I think back on it, having the flaming microphone on set actually helped because it made Eric's performance a little better and it made his expression more real because he was actually doing those movements with a real flaming microphone. And I think if we just were to fake it, it probably wouldn't have been as good. I'm not a huge fan of wide angle lenses, but they definitely do have their place sometimes. Uh, in this picture, in the wide shot, I used a wide angle lens and I took it from a dynamic angle, so really low, and Eric was above me, I was laying down, my head was resting on a pelican case, and I was looking up at Eric as he did these different moves, dancing around with this flaming microphone. And because I was using a wide angle lens, um, the, the perspective changed, so everything closer to me was larger. So when he would throw his microphone down and catch it in his foot, his foot appeared kind of bigger in a, in a comical way. And I think for this particular image, it worked. And when you try, you know, being an artist, every you'll have uh, you know good shows and you'll have bad shows. Or you'll take a good picture, or you'll take a bad picture. Or you'll have a bad football game or a good football game. Eric himself is a good frontman, but he also knows a thing or two about dressing himself. Uh, so when he moves on stage and he does his different tricks and his different performances, uh, he needs an outfit that'll express the way that he's moving. So it worked for this photo shoot, he had that leather jacket uh, with the frills, so anytime he would throw up his arm, his movements would be enhanced because those frills would kind of move with the wind and match his hair. One of the other interesting things about his wardrobe was it was pretty much all leather, so any light that I put on it reflected in an interesting way. The backlight also lit up his leather pretty well. It kind of gave a, um, a glare because the leather itself is shiny, so it enhanced the rim light which separated him from the background. So I was taking frames and he had a pretty, pretty stern look on his face the whole time, a pretty serious performance look. But then one of the times when he threw the microphone down and caught it, he did like this, ah! And I caught that frame and that ended up being the final selection that I chose because of that expression on his face. So I'm not so sure if he's a big fan of it, but that was, that was my favorite image from the shoot. I have two main cameras that I like to use uh, when I do photo shoots. The first is a Canon 1DS Mark III and the second is a Phase 1 645 with a P65 Plus back. Now, I use the Canon Mark III for the wide shot and the Phase 1 for the portrait shot. And the reason of that is because this. Um, the Canon camera shoots a lot faster than the Phase 1. Uh, to me, it's a lot better for action shots because of the quick frame recycle. Um, but the phase one has a much higher resolution so when I'm dealing with subjects where you can kind of slow it down and just do like more controlled portrait I would obviously like to use the higher resolution camera but in the wide shot when he was moving around really fast it made more sense to use the Canon. 
So later on, when we were finished uh, getting the flaming microphone set up, I just wanted to, to take some close-ups of Eric's face, so I switched camera, and I switched to the phase one for that. And I used an 80 millimeter lens on the 645 camera when I was doing the portrait. And the reason for that is just so I don't distort any of the facial features. Because it's one thing to do a wide shot and distort the feet and the microphone, but as soon as you're doing that to somebody's face, it can look a little weird. So for portraits, I always, I always like to use longer lenses. The portrait is lit in a very similar way uh, to the flaming microphone. The difference is that we took a lot of the CTO off of the main globe light and we pushed that globe a lot closer to his face. So when lights are closer to the subject's face, they take on a much softer quality. So having that right up close for a portrait just worked better because it was more of a beauty light. Uh, now, the backlight is almost exactly the same as the wide shot. It's a, a more colder kind of just zoom reflector harsh backlight. And that all kind of ties together again with those dark storm clouds behind it. This was a special day for me because me and Joey Lawrence have been uh, dying to work together since we met and since I, I saw his work and and um, we're both very big fans of each other so we, we've been you know working on treatments nonstop and we've come really close to to shooting a video but it had to get postponed so this is just something in the meantime you know now now we got we gotta head over to the show uh, which is pretty close and play play an awesome show. Get him sex.